Hello, I'm Rudranath Sanyal. Welcome to this special edition of War and Peace, your go-to program on security and geopolitics. We have brought you several reports and insights on a range of issues that have a bearing on security. Since the time we aired our edition on science and security, there have been a series of developments that have made science and the cutting edges of science all the more pronounced in the security environment. The chairman of the Defense Research and Development Organization, Dr. Shatish Reddy, is here with us to give us insights into India's growing strength as a world power with its science and technology. Dr. Reddy, what do you think are some of the inherent strengths of Indian scientists who have progressed so fast despite that era of sanctions not so long ago? The Indian scientists took the challenge of the sanctions. Uh, in fact, the sanctions made the scientists strive hard for the complete indigenous development of Vini systems. In fact, when you look back, maybe about 30 years back, 90% of the systems what we have developed today were not existing in the country. In the last about 25 years, people have worked a lot on many technologies and all those required for many of the different systems have been developed indigenously today, whether it is subsystems, components and systems. Today when you look at uh, many of the systems what are used in our critical systems like missile technologies or radar systems or torpedo technologies and sonar technologies and EW systems, we are about <coughs> more than 80 to 90 percent indigenous uh, technology. EW would mean electronic, electronic warfare. Electronic warfare systems. Right. Credit goes to the scientists who have uh, taken the challenge of developing the indigenous uh, systems and make the country self-reliant in many of the critical areas. It's, you know, Dr. Reddy, hardly two decades ago, these sanctions were in force. And now, many of these global powers, the technology leaders, they're looking for partnerships with their Indian counterparts. So how did that happen so fast? Absolutely. As I said, when the sanctions were imposed, I think it uh, uh, made the country's uh, scientists think in a completely different way. Why should we depend on somebody? And why somebody should say that I will not allow you to develop these things or I'll, I will not allow you to make the systems. I'm not talking about uh, defense technology scientists or defense scientists alone. Whether you look at the space, right from the engines what we have developed, the motors of country scientists have developed, the cryogenic engines what uh, have been developed in the country, to various uh, scientific departments uh, in the country have taken this as challenge and have worked on many systems and many technologies on that. And particularly, as is rightly said, the defense technologies and where the restrictions are more on the missiles related technologies. Today in the missiles, uh, more than 90 percent is the indigenous technology content. In his book, India 2020, Dr. Abdul Kalam says that if you tell the institutions to do the impossible, the possible happens. So are you still focused on dreaming that big? Sure father of Indian uh, missile systems and uh, chairman, uh, that time actually Secretary of Defense R&D, Dr. Kalam, used to continuously tell all the scientists that you should think big. And when you think big only, you will be able to achieve something in your life. So always uh, aim for very big things. Like example, in his own life, when we were making many systems, we were becoming one of the five nations or six nations in the world who have developed so that has been the track record actually. Track record. But then he was saying when should we make first of its kind systems and everything. And so he himself worked for uh, the supersonic cruise missile with of course uh, uh, jointly with Russians and made the BrahMos uh, missile which is one of its class. Yes. Uh, the only one in the, the world. The only one uh, the time in the world who, uh, which was a supersonic cruise missile. So work for that type of a technologies. And uh, that is how today we have our own uh, main battle tank, Arjun, what is developed. 
we have our Tejas aircraft which has uh, come into existence today going into air force being produced in the country and these are the systems which country never thought that country could develop its own tank, country could develop on its own missiles, country can develop its own uh, uh, aircraft but today they are all realities. So you always have to think big and that becomes the reality after 10 years or 15 years and uh, dream for them. Yes. Unless you have a dream, actually uh, it said if you dream that you should make something or you should become something, then you will not be able to sleep yes. because to make the, that dream reality, you have to work very hard. Right. It is well known that for several decades, India had this vast reservoir of people with knowledge of pure science. We have had all-time greats from the realm of science. But now it is getting converted to applied technology. So what is this quickest way to convert your knowledge of science into applied technology in this highly competitive security environment? See from uh, pure sciences, the basically the path when you look at it is uh, the basic sciences or pure sciences to applied uh, research, to translational research and to a product it becomes. See uh, it depends on the uh, particular uh, type of uh, uh, science and technology. Uh, for it to take into a shape into a product to come out. But generally, uh, it could be anything from uh, 6 to 15 years time uh, based on the type of a technology. Uh, the academic institutes which are supposed to be doing the basic research, they do the basic research and from there pass on to the laboratories like uh, DRDO laboratories. You work on the applied research and come up to translation research. The translation research to actual product development and all that and production goes to an industry. So this cycle, uh, as I said, can be uh, from anything from 16 to, 6 to uh, 15 years of time it can take. As fast as depending on uh, the type of technology, what is required for a particular system can be about uh, 6 years, 5 years or it can take up to 15 years also. And do you think the industry, the, the consumers? and as well as startups in the private sector can you know be all involved and be in sync <coughs> from the start from the word go uh, for any country to progress and to become a real technological uh, advanced nation unless you dream of uh, futuristic technologies and advanced technologies you will not be able to come out with uh, any state of the art products today a lot of startups are coming up and these are all uh, uh, coming up with academic institutes the incubation centers are uh, established in varieties of uh, uh, academic institutes and they are nurturing these incubation centers and from there the startups are taking shape and startups are I think uh, in the uh, coming few years are going to play a tremendous role with lot of innovative technologies coming out of them. And Dr. Reddy, do you think even average colleges and universities or products from average colleges and universities can come up with innovative technology for startups that are going to really help the defense sector in some way? Your statement is extremely uh, uh, correct, uh, true. Um, not just uh, the institutes like IITs and uh, Institute of Science and things like that. Uh, there are many institutes in the country which are producing many uh, scientists and engineers who are coming out with uh, varieties of products and varieties of uh, technologies and by establishing the startups in the academic institutes or somewhere else. Uh, I can name a number of students who have come from normal colleges who are coming up with ideas and uh, innovations in defense technologies trying to make many products for the security of the country today. How would you like to qualify the range of science and technology for the defense sector where medicine or space or you know rocket science all, all that is you know part of the defense environment? The range is wide, very large uh, area. It starts from um, biological sciences, life sciences, food science to radar technologies, underwater technologies, 
and ships, submarines, medicinal plants, physiology and nuclear medicines to chemical technologies to material sciences to space technologies to missile technologies uh, communication technologies you electromagnetic optical sciences what not so it is a wide spectrum of area which actually defense technology is called in fact uh, if you look at the technologies worldwide what have emerged many of the things which have come into civil domain also have emerged from the defense research and defense technologies talk about today the complete uh, internet what we are talking it has actually primarily emerged from the right. defense that today we are using the navigation space based navigation gps yeah. as come from the uh, defense uh, research and defense utilities right. there have also been criticism that sometimes drdo was uh, not doing enough quality control how much of that is true see primarily uh, the DRDO, Defense Research and Development Organization, concentrates more on the research and development of a product. Meaning, you do a research and come out with a translational research and try to develop a prototype. After that, the prototype con get converts into a product produced by the industry. So, it is the quality should be there more in the industry where it is getting produced. Of course, the quality standards design for quality and all that should exist in DRDO also. So, the quality system has been um, really looked into it very seriously. Right from designing the system, the quality things have, uh, aspects have been brought in. And from there onwards, when you pass on to the industry, how the internal quality of each industry, then the external quality system, and the testing mechanisms and uh, testing for the environment mechanisms have been brought in. The facilities, infrastructure have been built in. Today we have a third party quality also coming into it. There are many quality assurance, quality control agencies have come in the country who are able to give a third party. So we are insisting right from the technician who is working in each and every industry and our place is well trained. And are you saying that some change has come about? A lot of change has come in the quality system and uh, trying to put in the quality system across the industries also. India is known to be good with designing airframes, world class. But why is it that we have not achieved as much in terms of engines? See, engine is a very uh, critical technology involving varieties of um, uh, science, uh, material science onwards to fabrication technologies and mm, combustion related uh, effects and fuels and what not and all that. It is a very complex uh, technology. If you look at the worldwide also, there are very few countries which have produced engines today. But then our country also has made a uh, good amount of progress uh, in engines. Kaveri engine has uh, uh, become a reality. But then, of course, the power of the engine was not up to the mark what you require it. But then the spin-offs of that engine are getting into multiple applications. A light combat aircraft, Tejas, uh, do you think it is already four and a half generation? Uh, somewhere around that. Uh, see, what is more important is the design, development, and then production cycle, what we have gone through last about 20 years of uh, the LCA Tejas that base has built the ecosystem. Yes, the that base has been created in the country. There are many aeronautic engineers who have come and who have experience now today. And you know how to take from drawing to a product today. You are able to produce them. There are many industries which have participated. Many subsystems are coming in. Today, if we have to make another aircraft, we will not be struggling that much and right. we will not be taking that much what we are taking that. You are watching War and Peace your go-to program on security matters and geopolitics. We will take a break now, after which Dr. Reddy will give us insights into the success of India's anti-satellite missile. Informative, incisive, intensive. Get your daily dose of news and analysis in English News Night every weekday at 9 p.m. on DD India. 
Channel number 620 on Tata Sky, 199 on Dish TV, 150 on Airtel, 28 on UCN and 395 on Videocon D2H. Welcome back. You are watching War and Peace, your go-to program on security and geopolitics. In this special edition of War and Peace, we have with us Dr. Shatish Reddy, the chairman of the Defense Research and Development Organization. Now, Dr. Reddy, before the break, you gave us so much of insight into the inherent strengths of India's science and technology, particularly the defense scientists. Now, you had that massive success with anti-satellite missile that was tested successfully in March. You know, when it happened, there was some apprehension about, you know, the debris disturbing space and damaging even the International Space Station. How did you overcome that and how actually you work with such precision? Uh, firstly, Mission Shakti, the anti-satellite uh, interception is a very complex technology what our scientists have achieved. The scientists have worked very hard day and night for a couple of years in design and development of this system. As you rightly said, when you are trying to hit a satellite in the low Earth orbit, the velocities of the systems are very high. The relative velocities between the two systems will be uh, more than 10 kilometers per second. So when you have such high velocities and your system need to go and hit the satellites, it's a hit to kill uh, scenario. The accuracy is what you require are centimeters. So you need to have very high precision systems, subsystems and technologies and your algorithms have to be the very optimal algorithms and uh, the control guidance system what you are using should be very, very uh, precise. And so, you have deployed all those technologies and you could hit the satellite with centimeters accuracy. And this is a pride of the nation and you have shown your technological capability to the entire world and the entire scientific community in the country across various scientific departments. And, and of course the entire academia and other related people are extremely happy and this has given a confidence in the Indian community that we also can do very complex missions like this. Coming to the debris, what you have said, lot of uh, studies have been done and ex extensive simulations have been done on this subject and seen that you are trying to uh, uh, hit the satellite in the low earth orbit that is chosen to be around 280 kilometers so that your debris whatever you create are uh, dying very fast. Also the way you have intercepted the uh, satellite you have chosen the way head on collision so that the chances of debris going higher in the upper atmosphere are very less. And the simulations what we have done have shown us nowhere we will be going anywhere near the space station. And as I said the test itself has been designed and planned in such a way that you will not cause any issue to any of the existing space assets. It is only done to show the technological capability and the scientific capability of the Indian scientists and India to, to the entire world and also to instill confidence in the Indian uh, community that we can do such complex missions. And you could do it and you have become the fourth nation in the world who have done uh, such exercise, United States of America, Russia and China and you have done it. And yes, you have hit it and uh, destroyed the satellite with centimeters accuracy. So there were a lot of s simulations that took place before the actual test. So do you think this is the trademark characteristic style of Indian scientists because this is what had happened in 98 also. The tests are fewer, the simulations are many and by the time you do the test, you hit the target. 
in any scientific endeavor when you are doing an experiment like this to see that you are able to do the experiment within the given boundaries and you are not able you should not cross the boundaries and things like that you should uh, have an extensive simulation should be done modeling and simulation is a very important uh, element in that and i definitely give credit to our indian scientists for doing such uh, accurate simulations and uh, and the actual test following the real simulation pattern and uh, i congratulate my scientists who have done this type of a extensive simulations and ensure that the interception has gone exactly the way they planned what were the key challenges there are uh, many uh, technologies uh, in this which we have uh, uh, our people have designed and developed here firstly the control guidance algorithms which have been designed for such high speed interceptions people have designed very accurate uh, uh, algorithms which work for this type of a conditions and i feel that uh, the indian scientists our uh, scientists who have done that uh, kudos to them for coming out with such innovative uh, mechanisms then uh, the seeker the optical seeker which has been deployed which has uh, continuously given a very long range tracking is one of the key technologies the divert and attitude uh, control system with quick response will not valves is again one more innovative technology which has gone into it then the navigation system and other many other technologies which have been deployed in are some of the critical technologies which have uh, developed for this purpose of uh, mission safety so do our scientists rise to the occasion all the time scientists always have raised to the occasion whenever uh, it was to be demonstrated to the world or it was to be developed uh, do you think our own satellites are well protected basically the mission shakti has uh, been done to show the technological capability of the country uh, to uh, attack a satellite this works as uh, a deterrence the deterrence is the best way of defense okay 100% of the systems were indigenous and do you think this would be possible without the help of the industry the private industry see when you look at the whole sector of defense unless the industry ecosystem is uh, there it is very difficult for any country to produce advanced technologies the role what is to be played by the academia the r&d organizations and the industry is very clear also industry need to do research in niche areas uh, and with the niche areas they should come out with products related to that niche area we have introduced a scheme called technology development fund where to encourage the industries who are coming out with uh, very good designs and they need infrastructure support there are more than about 1500 industries registered with us today that's the type of uh, that's quite a figure it's a revelation a uh, lot of people coming and uh, let me tell you about another very important scheme uh, dare to dream this is uh, kalam dr kalam used to say that dream and dream and then only you will be able to come out with project taking that idea on uh, his birth anniversary we have announced uh, a contest called dare to dream any individual or a, uh, industry can come out with innovative ideas uh, which can be really worth uh, uh, our rewarding uh, when we have announced that scheme flooded with ideas now we are actually going to them and trying to see that and whom we can support we can reward and then later support it to come up as a industry and these industries are looking not just for the indian uh, market or indian defense market they are looking at the world wide market whenever we take up a research area right in the beginning we are taking development partners industry is joining as a partner in our uh, a, a technology or a product development uh, so that they become the production agency later and continue and they can also help with uh, matters like empirical evidence absolutely no, not only empirical evidence they, they help us in a big way their manpower works the manpower is getting trained and then uh, you know their agility can be utilized and what not and all that so 
the new models are evolving today. Against this happy backdrop, what are your immediate priorities? We keep asking this question, perhaps it has become all the more relevant a question now. We have a lot of things uh, what we need to do. Firstly, we have to make many systems indigenous. We have to uh, reduce the import dependency in a big way. Uh, we have uh, uh, become strong in many of the areas today. Missiles, radars, electronic warfare systems, the sonars, the torpedoes and communication systems and all that. And we have many areas where we need to concentrate right from materials, varieties of materials development onwards, precision uh, components, sensors, detectors and things like that. From there to some of the large platforms which are required for the country and uh, some of the uh, areas where we need to concentrate in the coming uh, years and try to improve the indigenous content in the armed forces in a big way. The indigenous content will go up close to my feeling is uh, are above 70 percent uh, in, in the next about five years. This is what I am uh, uh, very hopeful and uh, I am sure that it should be happening in the coming five years. Yeah, these are all happy developments and the heart is happy. So what is the importance of heart in this business of research? Dr. Kalam would say that anything that is done half-heartedly would not only yield half-hearted results but also would generate bitterness all around. So what is the significance of this quotient called heart of the scientist? When you give your wholehearted uh, involvement into anything, then only the complete results will be seen. You have to, Indian style we say, manasavacha karmana, you have to participate in uh, anything work. I am been seeing last 25 to 30 years, the scientists have given everything to the work what they are doing. So we come to the end of this special edition of War and Peace, your program on security and geopolitics. If you wish to write to us, you can send letters to War and Peace, room 513, Tower B, Doordarshan Bhavan, Kopernikas Mark, New Delhi, 110001. You can also send an email to War and Peace 2004 at hotmail.com. Keep watching and Keep looking out for another episode of War and Peace, both on DD News and DD India. Bye-bye.